Welcome to Phone with Drilling Engineering. In deep drilling, our borehole must always be filled with a special fluid called the drilling mud. The pressure of the mud acts on the borehole walls and stabilizes the borehole. The optimum setting of this pressure is essential for a drilling operation. If the pressure on the borehole is too small during drilling, then oil and gas can flow in from the surrounding rocks and we have a kick situation. If the pressure on the borehole is too high, then we may frack the surrounding rock. The borehole will bust and the drilling mold disappears into the cracks of the rock. Both situations, the kick and the frack, are not good during drilling. That is why we always have to maintain a relatively small mud pressure window in practice. So, in order to avoid a kick situation, we need to increase the density of our drilling mold so the pressure in the borehole is greater than the pressure of the fluid in the spore space of the surrounding rock. The pressure in the borehole is quite easy to calculate using uh, this simple formula. Pressure equals mod density times acceleration due to gravity times depth of the borehole. Now that's the static pressure in the borehole. But now there's a little problem. During drilling, the drilling mod is not static in the borehole. The drilling mod needs to circulate through the drill string and up again in the borehole so that drill cuttings can be flushed out of the borehole. But when we switch on the pumps and the mud flows, then the pressure in the borehole increases as the dynamic pressure acts in addition to the static pressure component. It's therefore important that we also know the proportion of this dynamic pressure in the borehole. Otherwise, it can happen, as you see here, that you can exceed the frag pressure and create cracks in the surrounding rock. Of course, there's a formula to calculate this dynamic pressure component, but such calculation is quite complex. First, you have to calculate the Reynolds number, estimate the roughness of the borehole walls, estimate the thickness of the filter cake, concentration of the drill cuttings, and finally, you must take account the exotropy of the drilling mod and rheological properties of the mod. All this is pretty complicated. So calculating dynamic pressure loss is quite a challenge. But drillers always have great ideas. So what they did is, they stated that, that the dynamic pressure component can be expressed just as a kind of additional static pressure, which can be expressed by another rho GH formula. This is pretty cool because we can further simplify this formula a bit. We now have two rho values, a static rho and an imaginary dynamic rho, and together they can form a term called ECD, which stands for Equivalent Circulating Density. The ECD value describes the dynamic pressure in the borehole when the pumps are switched on, just as the normal density describes the static pressure in the borehole when the pumps are switched off. That is why the ECD value and the normal density value are very important during drilling and must continuously be observed and monitored. This is why we are always generating logs during drilling complex boreholes. Just as you see here in this log, the green line shows the ECD value, which represents the pressure in the borehole when the pumps are switched on. And the red line represents the static pressure in the borehole when the pumps are switched off. Both of these curves must always stay within the narrow pressure window, which varies as we drill along the well. You can see it in the graph. So in summary, we could see that the ECD value is very important variable and has to be kept under control. But it is not so easy to explain. I hope you could really follow the explanation. So, if you want to know more precisely about this, come to our lecture, Drilling Engineering 2, here in Freiburg. We look forward to seeing you. Look off.